morning. Welcome to Worship at Hope Lutheran Church in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Today is August 9th, and as usual, we have announcements at the beginning, and Les will be starting. Good morning, church. Good morning. As always, we'll start out with, God is good. All, all the time. time. And all the time. God, God is good. good. Okay, we have a service opportunity again this week, Thursday the 13th, over at the Feed My People. Last week, we had about uh, 9, 10 people showed up. As always, they always appreciate our help because they have two pop-ups on Friday. So if you'd like to be a part of this, if you can just give me a call by 9 o'clock on Thursday morning so we get a countdown there, we'd love to have you. And we do the social distancing and the mask and the gloves, and it's a great time. we got our own little family that helps out down there. So just give me a call by 9 o'clock on Thursday. Also, we still have about a dozen mattresses. We had a big sale last week. I got rid of about 15 last week, but... There's like 12 left, folks, so if anybody's interested in a mattress, again, just give me a call. Uh, they're in a box. They're really easy to put in a van or even in the back of a car, or I'll deliver them. Uh, they're $100, and all the proceeds go towards uh, Sleep in Heavenly Peace to help build our, uh, our bed buildup and also get some lumber bought in. Okay, then we have a food, uh, pop-up food pantry coming up, uh, not this Monday, but next week, one day. I started calling kids. we got some good youth coming to help volunteer for that. And they'll be here at Hope's parking lot at uh, 2.30 to 3.30. And we'll be doing that every third Monday. Monday of the month from now on. Okay, and then Encounter Hope is moving starting in September. Our service will be streamed on Thursday nights now at 6.30 starting September 3rd. We'll be moving from Wednesday to Thursday because of all the programming happening on, on, Thursday, on Wednesday nights. So Encounter Hope will be on Thursday nights starting September 3rd. And this week, Wednesday, Yad and Counter Hope will be talking about contentment and triumph. And we'll be comparing a baseball game to your life. And there's going to be some special music coming up on that Wednesday night. So you don't want to miss it. Wednesday night, Encounter Hope, 630. Thank you. We will be having drive-up communion this morning uh, right out front. If you come in on the Eddie Lane side, come up to the, the front doors. You'll meet Les and I there. That'll be from 10 to 11 this morning. So, our Monday morning coffee group is meeting again, and they meet outside in our parking lot area. So, come at 8.30 tomorrow, weather permitting, and bring your own coffee or beverage. Uh, bring a lawn chair and a face mask um, and, and look for the group. School supplies for Sam Davey. Uh, every year we do collect school supplies for Sam Davey and just your, your typical assortment of things that, that we would need for, for any kid to go uh, to school, for elementary school. So if you'd like to bring those, uh, you can. we have a, a spot inside the, the Welcome Area Church where you can drop those off. Help with worship. We thank everyone who helps with our, our worship services, and we have several people who volunteered to help today. Thanks to all of you, and if, if you'd like to help, do give us a call in the church office. And also, um, we're, we're just collecting up our, our list of people who would be willing to help us with when we do uh, gather for worship live. We'll need people to help uh, as people come to be greeters and direct people to the sign-in table for contact tracing information. God forbid that should happen, but we need to have that as a backup. And also ushers to um, usher people in the sanctuary. We had a, a wedding yesterday here, and, and so we were able to try out the practice, and it worked extremely well. So, so we do have a plan that will work when the time comes that we can open up, so that's good news. And ways to give, thank you all of you for your continued uh, faithfulness to our ministries here at Hope Lutheran. That is what fuels our mission. And so we have several ways that you are able to give. Those are our announcements. And so we begin, as we always do, with our mission statement. As God's people, abounding in hope and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we invite all to share in the unfolding experience of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance 
and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of our opening hymn. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around us and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear. And preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. and girls. Maybe some of you are involved in sports. I bet a lot of you are. And one of the things that coaches always tell us is that we have to keep our eye on the ball. Um, and boy, this, this tennis player here really has his eye on the ball, doesn't he? And um, it's very important. And you know, Sometimes I'm watching a baseball game and you can see that there's a, a fielder and, and he's going for the ball and he takes his eye off the ball because he's already thinking about his throw and then boop, the ball goes past his glove. So it's because he took his eye off the ball. So in so many sports, you gotta keep your eye on the ball because that's where the action is. And it kind of reminds me of the story we're gonna hear in the Bible today 
where Jesus has set his disciples ahead of him, and they're on the Sea of Galilee. He sends them off in a boat, and then the sunset, and they are rowing at night to go to their new destination. Well, this storm kicks up, and there are waves, and they're, and they're rowing right into it. So they're, you know, the, the more they row, the wind is pushing them away from their destination, and it's in the wee hours of the morning, and suddenly they see this apparition on the water, and it looks like a ghost to them. And, and they're frightened because what is this thing that is coming to them walking on the water? And uh, so they're very scared and they start to cry out and then it's, it's Jesus who has been coming to them walking on the water. And he says, take heart, it's I, don't be afraid. And so by now he's close enough and Peter, who's in the boat, says, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come to you. And so then Jesus says, come to me, Peter. So Peter steps out of the boat, and sure enough, he's, he's walking right on the water, and he's looking at Jesus and walking towards Jesus, but then the wind kicks up, and the waves are even choppier, and he starts, he takes his eyes off of Jesus, and he starts looking at the wind and the waves, and and now he starts to sink because he's not intent on Jesus. And he's thinking more about the dangers around him. He starts to sink. It's just like taking your eye off the ball. Peter took his eye off of Jesus. And so he, he starts to sink and he cries out to Jesus and Jesus reaches out and grabs him. And he says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So... Boys and girls, that's, that's good advice for us. When we're in the storms of life, we can look to Jesus and just remember to keep your eye on Jesus. And let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, when the storms of life come against us, help us to remember to keep our eyes on you and keep our faith and our trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading for today is from the 14th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 22nd verse. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Friends, may grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and Christ Jesus our Lord. There is a whole lot of fatigue and exhaustion going on in today's gospel story. To begin with, Jesus and his disciples have just spent the entire day with a huge crowd of people on a remote hillside. Jesus spent that whole day healing their sick, and then they coordinated a mass feeding and cleanup. That was a full day's work. But there was even more. Jesus had gone there in the first place because his heart was heavy. He'd gotten the news that John the Baptist had been beheaded. They went to this lonely place 
so that they could be alone and grieve John's passing away from the constant demands of the crowds. But once they arrived at this lonely place, there were all the people. So Jesus laid aside his own grief, and he set about to care for their needs. How difficult it is to tend to other needs when your own heart is brimming over in grief and sorrow. Ordinary things take twice the energy. We've all been there. Sometimes the needs before you are so pressing that you just have to place your own needs on a shelf until you can get back to them later. That is exactly what Jesus did, but now he wanted to be alone. So he sent the disciples ahead of him in their boat, and then Jesus dismissed the crowds. At last, he was alone. He retreated to the mountaintop, and there he prayed. His soul desperately needed that one-on-one -on -one time with God. Just like us, God was Jesus' source of strength and hope. And in Jesus, we see a model for ourselves. We need God. And we need to tend this holy fire within. God is our light and our life. When we neglect our connection to God, we become depleted in strength and hope. Martin Luther was in the habit of praying at least two hours every day. He began each day in prayer. Once he remarked, if I fail to spend two hours in prayer each morning, the devil gets the victory through the day. I have so much business I cannot get on without spending three hours daily in prayer. President Abraham Lincoln knew this too. Here was a man with the weight of the world on his shoulders. If you go to the Lincoln Presidential Museum in Springfield, Illinois, there is an eye-opening display there. They line up portraits of Lincoln every year from 1860 to 1865. Each year of his difficult presidency takes a dramatic toll on his features. He begins as the clean-shaven young lawyer but in five brief years, he's transformed into an aged, skeletal shadow of himself. Lincoln knew weariness, and he was no stranger to prayer. He said, I have been driven many times to my knees by the overwhelming conviction that I had nowhere else to go. My own wisdom and that of all about me seemed insufficient for the day. Prayer and time with God are essential. They revive our heart and soul. The story is told of a certain village in Africa. The message of Christianity had been embraced by this village. And as part of their regular devotional practice, each person in the village had found a lonely spot in the nearby jungle, and they would frequently go to their individual spot to pray. Each per person's spot was sufficiently remote enough so that he or she could openly pour out their heart to God in prayer. Over time, the pathways to these prayer spots became worn down, so it was evident then if some neighbors started to neglect their prayer life. The, the pathway would grow up again. And to, so to encourage their neighbor in prayer, they said, Brother, grass grows on your path. Jesus knew he needed to connect with God. He sent his disciples and the crowd away so that at last he could pray. He prayed from evening until the fourth watch of the night. That's between 3 and 6 a.m. in the morning. That was when the disciples spotted the apparition on the waters. So that was a very long prayer time. And now we enter into the second half of today's story. And again, there is great strain and fatigue. The disciples had also put in a full day's work on that hillside. They were worn out too. 
Then when evening had come, Jesus sent them off in their boat. They set off for the des destination across the lake, but then a stiff wind arose, and they were rowing right into it. Tired though they were, they had no option but to row on. These were seasoned fishermen. They were no strangers to rough waters and hard rowing. On and on they rowed. But as they rowed, the wind pushed them back. They still had a long way to go before they reached the shore. Life can feel that way. We're, in, we're currently in one of those times. It feels like we have been fighting this pandemic for a very long time. And we know that there's still a lot to go in front of us. And now we're facing the obstacle of school. What do we do about that? This social distancing has been extremely trying to people who need to remain isolated, like elderly people who live alone or in skilled nursing facilities. The loneliness wears them down. Depression, substance abuse, and domestic abuse have increased. This is a trying time, and there are still so many leagues to go before we reach the shore. And there are other long struggles too. Persistent health issues. I look at the names of the people on our weekly prayer list. Healing can take a very long time. Complications hit and make a situation even harder. And for people who must live with chronic illness, they face the reality of those constant winds at their back. It's a long journey. Look around you. Who else is battling strong winds? Single parents, the unemployed, caregivers, those who face discrimination and constant microaggressions. Friends, there is no end to the constant headwinds. The disciples have battled the wind for over six hours and have made very little headway. It's then, when their hands are calloused, when their backs are aching, that Jesus comes. Jesus comes to them across the impossible. They thought they were in this situation alone, but Jesus was coming, and he says, Take heart, it is I. And the Greek there, for it is I, is ego a me, I am, the name of God. <clears throat> Jesus identifies himself by the holy name of God. It's as if he's saying, take heart, my friends, the Holy One of Israel, God Almighty, is with you. Peter speaks up. Lord, if it is you, then tell me to come to you on the water. And oftentimes, I've seen commentaries that laud Peter's initiative. These writers sometimes even criticize the other disciples for their lack of courage and faith. These 11 cower in the boat, while Peter alone steps out of his safety zone. If you want to walk on water, the saying goes, you've got to get out of the boat. But personally, I find these kind of commentaries and sermons that they leave me feeling worse about myself, not better. I guess in the end, I'm more like the 11 who stayed in the boat. And also, the boat is the oldest symbol of the Church of Christ. As the people of God, we are like the disciples in the boat. We dwell together in community, as a community of faith, through storms and across the seas of time. No, Peter, don't get out of the boat. Don't leave the community. Stay in the boat, Peter. Why? Why go out on your own? And let's take a closer look at what Peter says. Lord, if it is you. And his statement has a familiar ring to it. If it is you, has a testing quality about it, and it sounds uncomfortably similar to what 
the devil said to Jesus in the wilderness, If you are the Messiah, command these stones to become bread. And Peter's words also resonate with the scoffing crowds at Jesus' crucifixion. If you really are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. So Peter's statement does not bode well here. He leaves his comrades behind and he ventures out on his own. And once there, his isolation sets in. He becomes all too aware of the waves and the depths of the waters. He is in way over his head. And that's when he realizes his error. He begins to sink. Lord, save me, he cries. And immediately, Jesus reaches out to save him. There is a lot of fatigue and exhaustion going on in this story. And in closing, I want to leave you with some final observations. First of all, like Jesus' example, take time to renew your soul. Connect with God. You are never too busy to take some time away to connect with God. Don't let the grass grow on your path. Secondly, in whatever situation you're in, whatever the demands that come your way, you don't have to walk on water. You are not the Messiah. You are not required to perform miracles. You don't have to be superhuman. Thirdly, there are others with you in the boat. Take a look around. Encourage one another, and when someone wants to help you, let them. That is what community is all about. And finally, we are not alone. Jesus is with us. He says, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Amen. confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. Let us pray for your whole Church throughout the world. Give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the well-being of your creation. Protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations and their leaders. In you, steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace kiss. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice, and the justice that is the path to peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need. Everyone who calls upon your name will be saved. Accompany all who are lonely, hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish, and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day, especially our own Rebecca Ching, Elaine Root, Jeremy Elf, Gerald Brown, Everett Seeley, Barb Zug, Jim Houck, Ken Anger, Sharon Hartle, Joanne and Maynard Faunus, Sharon Stewart, Terry Hankey, Jim Knutson, Joshua Solberg, Gary Johnson, Joanne Smith, Joanne Knutson, and Betty Powers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our congregation. You have gathered us here today, watching through our screens, as your people, and we thank you for this gift. We pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and our community who you've gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our final hymn, Amazing Grace.
peace. Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.